Okay, a call to order. Can we start with a flag salute? Yep. I can't stand up where I'm at. Under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. The Open Public Meetings Act Statement. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, the Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Augusta, Branchville, and Sussex Post offices and notice sent to the New Jersey Herald, the Star Ledger, and the clerk of the boroughs of Branchville and Sussex, and the townships of Frankfurt, Lafayette, and Wanage. Mission Statement. High Point Regional High School, in partnership with staff, family, and community, is dedicated to the quest for individual excellence. By fostering high standards of achievement, we prepare students to become responsible and productive members of a diverse society. With that, Jim, can I have a roll call? Mrs. Sanderson. Present. Mr. Ancliffe. Here. Mr. Carraza. Present. Mr. Don. Here. Mr. Kehoe. Here. Mr. Arnold. Here. Ms. Nugent. Here. Ms. Smith. Here. Ms. Tadona. Here. Dr. Ripley. Here. Do we have a quorum? Absolutely. Yes, we have a quorum. Uh, with that, a motion will be made that the High Point Regional High School Board of Education enter into executive session to provide an update on legal, personnel, and negotiation items, which are exempt from public participation pursuant to the New Jersey Public Law in 1975 Chapter 231, Open Public Meetings Act. Any discussions held by the board which need not remain confidential will be made public when appropriate. Minutes of the executive session will not be disclosed until the need for confidentiality no longer exists. The board will reconvene in public session in the, virtually at the conclusion of the executive session. It is not anticipated that any action will be taken. With that, do I have a motion? Motion. Session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Seeing no opposed, we'll move into executive session. Okay. Jim, who seconded? Again, we also uh, All right, so it's the first time I've been to a store since. Uh, I think we're live again. Yes. Everyone? No, yes. I told them 658. It says, it says live says, on streaming service. Oh, boy. Meeting is now streaming live. I said start us up at 658. You wrote okay, thanks. Try that sometimes, especially if we're going to. Oh, good. Um, now, great. Now you can do all that reading. Good. Well, I'll do the reading, but I'm going to turn off the video. You are going live now. Okay. Okay, we are live. I make a motion to return to public session. I second. In favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing no one opposed, we're back to the public open session. Uh, with that uh, unfinished business, there's no seeing no unfinished business. I'm going to move on to approval of the minutes. Jim? 
Uh, do I have a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of March 17th and the executive session minutes of March 17th? So moved. moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing nobody opposed, the minutes are approved. I'm going to now move to the public comments section of the agenda. Everybody, uh, this is going to be different than ever before, so please be patient. Uh, this is for agenda items only. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, we will open the, the public comments for agenda items only at this time. Each speaker will submit a written question or statement. They must state their name and address first. Uh, I will read, I will get the comment uh, that you submit and I will read it out over the internet. Uh, we're going to limit this section to no more than 45 minutes and please keep your comments or questions respectful. Uh, I'm going to start with a letter that was delivered to my office today and requested to be read in the public comment section. This shouldn't take more than three minutes, hopefully. Uh, the first public comment that we have is from William H. Gettler, Wantage, New Jersey. And the agenda item he's addressing is the budget. Dear board members, concerning your proposed 2020-21 budget, with the present medical and financial crisis caused by the Chinese Communist Party virus, quote, CCP virus, unquote, pandemic, please, all caps, eliminate any tax increases this year. But in my opinion, we now have an even more serious problem. The progressive slash socialist slash communist slash Democrats are using the CCP virus pandemic crisis as an excuse to destroy our republic form of government and replace it with the socialist slash communist dictatorship. Thankfully, the High Point Board did not approve the state's transgender policy, which was designed to destroy our country's moral character and undermine family values. Now, concerning your proposed remote public hearing, he did digress from the budget. I do not believe that a remote public hearing is a legal alternative to actually holding an open public meeting. The residents and taxpayers can see any of the information, cannot see, I'm sorry, any of the information that may be presented. I personally believe that this remote public hearing is an insult to us residents and taxpayers. Additionally, your budget as printed in the New Jersey Herald on Friday, April 24th, did not provide any information as to how the public could access this remote public hearing. The United States is supposed to be governed by a rule of law. Our primary law is our constitutions, both the United States Constitution and the New Jersey State Constitution. Under both of these constitutions, Governor Phil Murphy does not have the authority to write any laws, no less laws that violate the Constitution and that deny us our rights as defined in the Bill of Rights. Therefore, since Governor Murphy's executive orders are illegal under our Constitution, it would appear that these remote public meetings and the hearings that he apparently ordered will also appear to be illegal. You have the facilities available to hold a public meeting. Please let me know when this board is going to respect our constitutions and us residents and taxpayers and hold an actual public meeting hearing on the budget. The board is responsible for educating the youth of our, youth of our district about our constitutions and laws, but this board is obviously condoning the governor and attorney general violating our constitutions and laws. Why? You were elected to represent the residents of the district. The United States has the republic form of government, not a socialist communist dictatorship. Look at what has happened to every country where the people gave into a dictatorship. While it's over, it's about to end, so I will. Hmm. Excuse me. I'll finish reading it. It's just about over. The United States has a republic form of government, not a socialist communist dictatorship. Look at what has happened to every country where the people gave into a dictatorship. But in New Jersey, we have now had citizens arrested because they dared to attend religious service. A priest couldn't hand out palm leaves on Palm Sunday. Sussex County resident was threatened with arrest 
to be dared to peacefully protest against Governor Murphy, et cetera, et cetera. It would appear that the Chinese Communist Party is already in control of the state of New Jersey. I am requesting that this board please, please immediately inform Governor Murphy and Attorney General Gruel that Sussex County will comply with our constitution that does not wish to be included in the socialist communist dictatorship. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Do I have any other comments? Uh, okay, let me. So far, I don't see any other comments. I'm going to check one more time and see if any other comments were submitted. Just for the purpose of the people out there watching this, explain how you're getting that information. The, they're submitting it in, in writing to D Daniel Yardley, who is then writing them, posting them on. He's just posted so far he's not received any comments. I'm going to give an extra minute just because of the unique nature of today's meeting in case somebody is trying to submit comments. Dan, can you give me an update on whether there are any more comments submitted? All right, seeing that no more comments have been submitted, I would like to suggest at this point in time, if there was somebody trying to submit a comment, we will have a public comment section again at the end. And please submit your comments, get them to Mr. Yardley, and we'll read them towards the end. With that. Here's a comment. Excuse me? Comments are being, uh, I'm seeing comments come up. I did, did see one comment. I will read this comment that we just received. We received a comment from Sharon Uchida. I apologize if I mispronounced your name. One Matthew Drive, Wanage, New Jersey. Her comment is, I don't understand how anything can be spoken about at this time when we are unsure of our future. Okay, I, Dan, you wrote something else. I'm not sure if that's a comment or not. Are there any other comments? All right, I'm gonna move on then. We can always read if there's any other comments at the end of the meeting. At this point, I'd like to move to the public hearing on the final 2020-2021 budget uh, Dr. Ripley will facilitate the public hearing on the school budget and I'll assist. And so just to reiterate, when we do the uh, public presentation of the budget, we also give the opportunity and have in the past for public comments immediately following so as to uh, allow people to comment and ask questions at that time so as not to have to wait until the end of the meeting. We've entertained that in the past. I just want to reiterate that. So you were saying that when we do the present after the presentation, they can be submitting comments, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, uh, Dan, can you please begin the uh, the virtual presentation? Okay. Presentation. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, uh, Dan, can you please begin the, uh, the virtual presentation? Good evening, presentation. Welcome yes, to sir. the public hearing of the 2020-2021. Okay, uh, Dan, can you please begin the, uh, 
the virtual presentation. presentation. Yes, sir. This is the first opportunity of eight budgets okay. that I have uh, brought Dan, to the presentation. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, here in the 2020. Okay, uh, Dan, can you please begin school. the uh, virtual presentation? Yes, sir. Okay. This is the first opportunity of eight budgets that I have brought to the presentation. Yes, sir. Here in the 2020. Okay, Dan, can you please begin the virtual presentation? Yes, sir. This is the first opportunity of eight budgets that I have brought to the presentation. Yes, sir. This is the first opportunity of eight budgets that I have brought to the presentation. Yes, sir. This is the first opportunity of eight budgets that I have brought to the presentation. Yes, sir. This is the first opportunity of eight budgets that I have brought to the presentation. We're gonna we're gonna stop. We're gonna get this right. We're gonna get it right. At this point, I think it's good to fair to say that we're having technical difficulties. <laughs> can, can and we haven't even gotten to Gail yet. Have you gotten any more public comment? Fair to say oh, we're having technical right. difficulties. <laughs> here we go. At this point, I think it's good to fair to say that we haven't and we haven't even gotten to Gail yet. Have you gotten any more public comment? Fair to say oh, here we, we have right. difficulties. <laughs> and we haven't even gotten to Gail yet. Have you gotten any more public comment? Fair to say that we haven't even gotten to Gail yet. Have you gotten any more public comment? Fair to say that we haven't even gotten to Gail yet. Have you gotten any more public comment? Fair to say that we haven't even gotten to Gail yet. Have you gotten any more public comment? Fair to say that we haven't even gotten to Gail yet. Have you gotten any more public comment? Debbie, no. We'll get it. We'll get it going. We'll just be patient. It'll, it'll, we'll get it going. Scott, if, if you want to give, please. I'm oh, sorry, Scott. Muted, Bill. Yeah, I realized that. Sorry. I was going to say, if you wanted, while he set it up, we can always let Seamus go. That will give you plenty of time to set up. Scott, you're muted. To be able to get back to school quickly and have our grad good evening and welcome to the public hearing of the 2020-2021 high point regional high school budget to be able to get back to school quickly and this have our the first opportunity good of evening but welcome to the public hearing of the 2020 to quickly and have our grad school much as good evening to be able to get back to school quickly and have our grad school first opportunity of the eight but welcome to the public hearing of the 2020 to be able to get back to school We'll get it going. We just need just a few minutes. We'll be patient. Just we're going to be patient. We'll get it going.
Good evening, and welcome to the public hearing of the 2020-2021 High Point Regional High School budget. This is the first opportunity of eight and welcome to the public hearing of the 2020-2021 High Point Regional Good High evening. School. And, and welcome to the public hearing of the 2020 of the high school. This is the first opportunity of the 2020-2021 High Point Regional High School. And welcome to the public hearing of the 2020 Regional High School budget. This is the first opportunity of eight budgets that I have brought to the community that has been done remotely. Regional High School and as much budget. as that is a difficult. This is process, the first opportunity of eight that we are budgets that I have safe. brought to the community that, that, that has been done remotely. Regional safe. High School and as much budget. as so that is we're a difficult to be able to get back to school quickly and have our graduation on our scheduled june 18th evening now let's get to our budget in this slide we'd see that the tax levy and general fund unfortunately are going to increase while there are reasons for that it does not make it any easier for the taxpayer there are two reasons why the tax levy and general fund are increasing to the degree that they are this year. Over the last four years, the state has reduced the money that they give back to us from our tax dollars of $1.723 million. Coupled with our responsibility to maintain our facilities and grounds, and along with other fixed increasing costs, next year's tax levy will increase by $2 million or 14% and the general fund will increase by $1.18 million or 5.37%. The state aid reduction in four years is a reduction of 27% of what they have given back to us. This is a staggering amount, which will continue over the next three years to the degree that there's perhaps when all this is said and done, we may get nothing each year from state aid. So they may keep all of our tax dollars and give us nothing to run the district, but that's yet to be seen. So we have those two issues, the need to maintain facilities and the staggering reduction in state aid. Let's move on to the next slide, which demonstrate our total expenses in a pie graph. Obviously the largest expenditure is salaries and benefits of 70%. That percentage has been reduced in the last two years by 5%. As a matter of fact, we have reduced 30 positions in the last six years. At this point, we have reduced so much of discretionary spending that that is the only area that we can address in the future. Let's move on to the next slide. Budgeted appropriations. This essentially tells us where the money's going. Our general fund, which dates on the left, Fund 11 and Fund 12, is inclusive of what is referred to here by the asterisk of capital projects and maintenance reserve projects, meaning we have a responsibility to our community to maintain these gorgeous facilities and these functional facilities. This building is 55 years old, and these accounts have been depleted over the last several years to the point where we're there, there's almost nothing remaining. We have needs to maintain these facilities. I'll give you a couple examples of that, which is coming in our long-term facility plan that we've been discussing for the better part of a year. One is the removal of an underground oil tank. Another is to maintain uh, the deteriorating driveways and parking lots to address sometimes 55 year old rooftop HVAC units, along with some sections of our roof, which are also 55 years old. This requires a significant investment that has to some degree not been addressed in the last several years. 
this has a major impact on our budgeted appropriations, as you can see on the bottom, which are increasing by $1.1 million. So as we look at the slide labeled budgeted revenues, really what I'm looking for here is the second line. I'm not gonna gloss over the second line item that says tax levy. You can see there that it is an increase of $2 million or 14%. And that is because we've talked about the reduction in state aid, plus the need to update and maintain our facilities. Those are significant expenditures that have resulted in this. And so if you, in this number of 14%, if you look down, you see state aid reduction of 753,000 or 13.3%. So the total fund or the total budget is an increase of 5.1%. That's two reasons, as I said. Reduced revenues, increased expenditures. Let's move on to the next slide. Municipality share of the tax levy. All right, here is the breakdown of each municipality and their percentage of share of the tax levy. And it's based upon the number of students. And so you can see that some municipalities, students, ascending to high point is increasing, some is decreasing. And so while Branchville is sending us eight more students, that is a significant percentage over what they were sending last year of 31. And Wantage, having formerly sent 447, is only sending 420. So their percentage of the share of the total tax levy will be relative to the number of students they're sending. So let's move on to the next. And here's really where, where we're gonna learn a lot about this budget. The loss of revenue and the increasing expenditures. The first four bullet points demonstrate the loss in state aid. This is equivalent to 27% over the last four years. And that is a significant portion. So as we move down off of the state aid cuts, we get to what I referenced earlier, the capital and maintenance reserve or the re responsibility to maintain our facilities. And you can see the numbers there, 669 and 150,000. Those accounts need to replenish so that we can take care of the facilities and the projects about which I've previously spoken. The next four bullet points are a demonstration of the increasing expenditures about which we have no discretion meaning when special ed tuition rates increase, we have no discretion, we have to pay that. Obviously, we, have, we, we want to provide a uh, free appropriate public education and adequate education to our students, but this does come at a cost. Transportation costs are increasing, retirement payout and sick days and benefits. And so the loss of revenue and expenditure increases equate to almost $2.9 million dollars and this demonstrates why the tax levy is set to increase by 2 million. So re in reality, we've had to cut elsewhere significantly to come up with this number as high as the uh, tax levy increase is. And so as we look at our last slide, we're essentially looking at the tax levy share for each municipality. And this is an estimation, of course, based upon a rounding of the figures and incomplete information that will ultimately come from the state DOE. Nevertheless, it gives us context as to each individual taxpayer share. If you look on the far right column, it says difference on a $200,000 home. So if we break this down, we see what each individual municipality will, can expect to pay more this year based upon last year based upon the budget that we've just gone over. Now, this is not easy. And while these numbers do not necessarily overwhelm contextually, they are an increase. And we've not seen increases in high point budgets. And it is objectionable. But it is, again, based upon the 27% decrease in state aid and the need to maintain our facilities. And so while we have attempted to be fiscally responsible and cut and cut and cut in every discretionary line in this budget, we cannot make up for a $1.723 million reduction in state aid and 
the significant costs in maintaining a 55 year old facility. And so in the end, this is the likely ballpark figures that will impact each individual taxpayer in our community. I want to apologize for the uh, technical difficulties. Um, this is what our teachers have been dealing with now for uh, six weeks, and it can be exceedingly daunting and quite nerve wracking. Um, as I see by some of the comments we did, we spent a significant, we did prepare, we spent a significant amount of time preparing for this. I am very sorry for the technical difficulties. This is the first uh, virtual meeting we've conducted and it was a very important meeting and it has uh, not gone off without a hitch. I appreciate your patience. Now, um, should you have any comments, questions, please post them as you've been doing. So far, I don't see any uh, comments or questions, but I'd like to give it a little more time in case people are formulating their questions. And there is a little bit of a delay. There is. Will the board have their discussion about the budget when we are moving the action item? We're not gonna talk about it here. We're gonna allow the public to talk about it here. Correct? Correct. Okay. If there are any qualifying questions, uh, certainly I will, uh, I will answer any based upon the fact that it is, uh, uh, I think, appropriate to be able to respond to any questions should they arise. So I, I do see a question. Um, Dr. Kehoe, would you like me to respond or should I, uh, should I wait for, for you? What, what would you prefer, sir? You're muted. Me? I don't see the question, so I'll have to defer to you then. I see a question on uh, YouTube. The question is from Sharon Uchida, who formerly uh, was mentioned. It says, the, so the levy is at 14%. Will that go to the public for vote? I can answer that. Um, the, uh, due to the significant uh, efforts of the board to maintain fiscal responsibility over the last three years, and the board had maintained negative 9% reduction in the tax levy, um, there was what was available, something called um, banked cap, which um, was available um, for such dire circumstances as this. And so the number does not require, as high as it is, does not require a, uh, a vote of the community. Furthermore, um, over the last uh, six, seven, eight budgets, uh, this will, for the first time, as I said, bring high point uh, above having cut. We were at negative 9% over the last um, seven budgets, and this will obviously bring us into the positive. However, um, that figure brings um, is still lower than any other um, entity in the area. Uh, while I'm not trying to state that 14% is not a staggering amount, I acknowledge that. Um, 
but it, it, it is completely uh, reflective um, of those circumstances about which I spoke in the presentation. However, it is also um, the, the budgets have been reduced repeatedly over and over. So uh, while this is a significant increase, we are still over the last eight years, we're still very, uh, very, very low comparatively speaking with other government agencies. Again, I'd like to reiterate, uh, I know it was stated in the budget, but the state has reduced our funding in the last four years by more than $1.7 million. Uh, that is a crushing blow. And we do anticipate a significant more reductions from the state over the next three years. Um, this is uh, a daunting task to say the least. And we are not, and seemingly because the number is significant, we are not unaware of the impact on our community. We have demonstrated uh, our focus on reducing budgets in the past, but based upon the crippling uh, cuts and the need to maintain the facilities, this was the, uh, the appropriate necessary um, course of action. Would it be appropriate if if we moved on with our meeting and somebody did send a message or send a question that we could deal with it at a late at a later time in our meeting? I, mean, I, I think you, that's correct. And we there was another comment, but it's by the uh, same taxpayer. No disrespect. It's not supposed to be a dialogue with one taxpayer, but uh, it, an opportunity for the taxpayers to make their comments. So uh, I'm going to recommend we move on. And we'll have the opportunity at the end of the meeting to see if there's any other comments that we can address at that point in time. With that being said, can we move on to the presentations? The one presentation is a requirement to uh, update the board and the community on our 2018-19 uh, New Jersey School Report uh, Performance Report, which will be conducted by Mr. Campbell. Good evening, High Point. I'm sorry I'm not able to be with you this evening. Obviously, the circumstances um, have led to me presenting tonight remotely. I hope all are well, and I hope we're all together soon. Once a year, the Department of Education releases a comprehensive report on student performance and student data. It's the New Jersey School Performance Report, and this is a reflection of last year, 2018-2019. In the document, it's posted on the website. There's a letter from me. And I just want to reiterate that these are public documents you can Google them, they come up easily, and eight years worth of reports are archived. It's also posted on our website, and we make the most recent report available using the icon with the cap and the books. We had a fantastic report. In almost every area, student um, improvement was noted. There were a couple areas we're going to target for particular improvement next year, but it was an outstanding report and we're uh, particularly proud of our, of our students. I wanna point out that every year when this is reported, we target areas to improve. So this is in the background last year's report and our two targeted areas were SAT scores 
and post-secondary enrollment. And I'm pleased to report that in this year's report, both of those targeted areas saw improvement. So uh, that's reassuring that our efforts were successful and that our students are succeeding in those two areas. So let's get into five areas that I chose to highlight where we had the most success. First of all, in every classroom, we're working on literacy. And I think to go from 45% to 58% in passing the state language arts assessment is a reflection of our entire staff working with uh, Newzella and Linkit and other tools to improve student literacy. Our SAT scores and our PSAT scores went up. Simultaneously, the averages for New Jersey students dropped. We also increased our student participation. So those are great numbers. Our graduation rate is close to an all-time high. It was 86% a decade ago. 66% uh, is a fantastic passing rate. Keep in mind, we allow any student to take um, an AP course, and we require that all students test. So 66% under those parameters is particularly strong. 79.4% post-secondary enrollment was a nice improvement and an area where we're always incredibly proud. We have the most comprehensive, high achieving AP program in the region. Two areas where we're gonna target for specific improvement. Two years ago, we saw great growth in math and we flatlined a little bit. So through Linkit, using our new assessments and PLCs, we hope that we can regain some traction and uh, change that curve for the math uh, scores. We do report twice a year on student suspensions, but it's also part of this report. Noticing uh, a slight uptick in suspensions, we revised our counseling center and our counseling staff, and we hope that this area improves um, during the current year. This report also includes a three-year snapshot of our language arts scores, as well as our math scores. And just to reiterate, all of the information is publicly available. We are transparent, review it, compare, contact me with any questions. And I just wanna say thank you to our students, our staff, our administrators and the board for what was really an outstanding performance report that all of High Point should be particularly proud of. Stay safe, be well, and I hope to see everyone soon. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Are we going to have a student council presentation? No. no other presentations are going to occur this evening. No other presentations. Then we'll move on to the board objectives. Uh, the board objectives were twofold. To review and update the Board of Education bylaws to ensure greater transparency and operations. And second, during the 2020 calendar year and over the next several years, High Point Regional High School Board of Education shall complete four credits per year from a total of 16 and four years so as to earn board certification from the New Jersey School Boards Association. With regard to the first objective of reviewing the bylaws for greater transparency and operations, I believe that's in the process and we're going to be reviewing some of the bylaws today. And with regard to the second we we're on track for last year. We we're on track for this year, and hopefully the virus will be over and we can finish our accreditation by the end of the year when the fall comes and we're able to meet again. But we're on track to complete both objectives. Annual appointments, adoptions, and designations. Gail, can you, is that you? No, all right. Annual appointments, adoption, and designations. It is recommended by the superintendent that the Board of Education designates Dr. Denise Atur, excuse my pronunciation, as school doctor effective July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021 for an annual fee. Uh, excuse me. I'm gonna, who was supposed to move this? And I apologize. I thought it was Gail for personnel issues. Yeah, I mean, I can do it. Yeah, I was prepared. Okay, thank you. All right. So 
Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'll do the first one. Is it recommended that the superintendent that the board designates Denise, uh, Dr. Denise Tote as the school doctor effective July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, uh, 2021 for annual fee of $13,000. Can I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call. Jim, you're muted. Yeah, take yourself off mute, Jim. Thank How you. How's that? Good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hank Cliff. He's muted. Tom, you're uh, muted. Huh? Take yourself off mute. There you go. Nope. No, he's back on. Put the space bar down. He said yes was a thumb up. Mr. Arnold. Yes. Mrs. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Smith. We Dr. lost her. Dr. Carraza. Yes. Ms. Nugent. Yes. Ms. Tadona. Yes. Dr. Kehoe. Yes. Uh, I can put abstain for Leanne. She's back. She's back. Can I move? I apologize. My computer died. <laughs> That's okay, Leanne. I called the roll call for um, annual appointments number one. Okay. And you voted? Yes for you? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Dale, do you want to move the rest? Yes. I want to move two through uh, 11. Number two is recommendation that the board appoints the director of safety and security as the attendance officer. And number three is that the board appoints individuals listed below as the affirmative action team for 2020-2021 school year as listed, Seamus Campbell and Gibbs Carter. Four, that the board appoints James Rice as the safety, school safety specialist for the 2000-2021 school year. Five, is that the board appoints James Rice as the anti-bullying specialist. Uh, number six, is that the board appoints the director of curriculum and instruction as the anti-bullying coordinator. Number seven is that the superintendent, uh, but the board appoints Gib Carter as the 504 coordinator. Number eight, that we appoint the supervisor of building and grounds as the safety compliance officer, IPM coordinator, AHERA, air quality designee, chemical hygiene officer, and the right to know officer. And then number nine, that the board approves the following tax officer annuity company for the 2022 21 school year. Equitable, Lincoln Landing Incorporated, and T. Rowe Price. Ten is that the board approves all job descriptions, handbooks, policies, regulations, and other legislative regulatory action of the board hereby continued in force through June 20th, 2021, subject to revisions as recommended by the superintendent. And number 11, that the board approves the following substitute pay rates for the 2020-2021 school year as listed. Can I have a second? Second. Can I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Arnold. Yes. Mrs. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Dr. Carraza? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Ms. Tadona? Yes. Mr. Ancliffe? We'll just face down now. Okay. Doc, Dr. Kehoe? Yes. Thank you very much, Gail. <clears throat> Next is other business. The first point is being resolved 
in our efforts to ensure transparency, a positive and cooperative professional relationship, and open lines of communication that High Point Regional High School Board of Ed establishes the position of liaison on the to the Montague Elementary Board of Education. Do I have a motion on that? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Um, yeah. Is this, this is not the same as putting a board member on from Montague because they don't have their 10% of population yet. Is that correct? That, that's correct. What, what we're trying to do is, is reach out to them at this point in time because they still haven't reached the plateau to qualify for a member on the board. So we, could, we thought this would be a good integral step uh, in prepared for them to be 10% and have a board member and have a better line of communication and more transparency with the community. And can I ask also, is this, um, I'm not sure how it reads, is this person coming to our meeting or we are going to them as a li liaison to the volunteer yeah. But maybe we say from the Montague School. I think it's right now that the, the motion is, should we make it a, make the position? And then at that point in time, the position would have to be developed as to what we anticipate they would do and how they would contribute to the board meeting. And I believe the position would be from our board, correct? Right. Right, Bill. So, our board to, to Montague. Right now it's deciding whether it's a position or not, and then we can decide the next step of how to fill it. But I don't understand what the position is at all. A, a liaison with the Montague Community and Board of Education. And again, I asked what Patty said and what I'm saying. Does that mean that High Point sends somebody to Montague or that Montague is sending somebody to High Point? High Point would probably send, I think as envisioned, send somebody to Montague. See, okay, I, that's not clear to me from the way it's written, but if that's what the plan is. So do I understand that this being the motion of the High Point Board of Ed, it is our, our discretion Correct. how we decide who and what. And it, it, otherwise it would be a motion by the Montague Board of Ed to send somebody to us. Correct. Or does, does the Montague Board want us sending somebody? I mean, you, you can look at that both ways, Wayne. I'm, I'm very happy please. to well, cooperate. One thing at a time, please. We're just trying to decide on the position. Okay. I just don't understand what we're deciding. I know you're deciding we're going to vote yes that we have a position, but we have no idea what that position is. But if we vote yes, then we can decide what it's going to be. Well, you, the board will, should decide whether they want to flesh it out first. Do they want to have the position and point somebody to flesh it out? Or how would you? How would the board like to approach it? I don't think it would hurt to say what we have maybe envisioned for this position, um, but certainly we can change that, you know, or, you know, after discussion, if people have different ideas or, um, you know, concerns they want to share. Correct. As Wayne pointed out, it's a high point board position that we created. So we would shape it and make the appointment to the position if we want to have the position. And if that position um, was to be approved, um, I think it's more along the lines of just somebody to be kind of a point person for the Montague community at High Point that, you know, on the High Point board that they could maybe reach out or just another, you know, maybe just a, a more somebody that they can go to that they can make sure that their voice is being heard. Is that correct? What you're and, thinking? And, and possibly interface with the Board of Education up there to the extent possible. Right. And that's absolutely up to the Monica Board if they want to have any one of us talk to them. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can always. So maybe to address some confusion, the, at one point in time, his, about mm, three years ago, there was a liaison from the Montague Board of Ed to that, that attended High Point Board of Ed meetings. 
right? Yeah. So that th that is not this position. This is, although naming very sim similar, this is a position where High Point Board of Ed would attempt to place somebody into the community, either at a board meeting if they if they permitted, or somewhere else to disseminate information to be that conduit to to us from the Montague community. Correct. Correct. Be because that position, um, interestingly, we our board invited that position to come to our meeting, gave them a spot on the agenda every month to speak to us. And that was a cooperative effort between both boards of education. That's why I, I just wasn't sure what this was saying. I just don't, I, I'm all for cooperating with Montague. I really am. I just wanted to understand better what this whole thought process Debbie, was. I think, that, I think that the vision is that by a high point board making the connection to them, that maybe we could create you know, or just create that possibly in the future because we want to communicate better with them. They've stopped reaching out to us. I think we should reach out to them. Yes. And, and if we can't reach out to the board, at least we can, the community knows that we are reaching out to the community. Correct. Look, we may get nowhere with it, right? We, I think... Uh, Right. We know that that is a risk. But no harm in trying. At least we need to attempt to mend some bridges um, or, rather than just leave it as is. Okay. Okay. Any other points? If we're going to make the appointment, I'd like to nominate Leanne Smith if she'd be interested and being the initial person reaching out to Montague uh, because of your previous relationship with them and if you'd be interested in doing that. Is this an action item? Do we have to vote to have? I'm just confused. I think Leanne would be great. I think Leanne should go to Montague all the time and talk to them. But is this an action item? <laughs> should have voted on before we're pointing Leon, Leanne? Do I, I don't, do I have to accept? I don't know. I accept whatever I, I'm happy to do whatever you want me to do. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if we have to vote on it or what. No, it's not an action item. It's not listed as a voting action item. We have action okay. items after this. Well, there, 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 there's a motion and a second on the floor to, 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 um, to create the position, oh, establish the position. That's true. That's true. Well, then let's let's take a vote on it. You can do uh, roll. You don't have to do uh, individual. You can do. You, you yeah, can do voice vote. Carrie. Okay. And we'll do a voice vote then. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing nobody opposed, we'll create the position of liaison to Montague and Leanne. If you're interested in, in accepting it, you could try to create the position and give us an idea of. Uh, what the objectives and tasks will be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next other business item is the district health related preparedness plan. We have uh, maintained our communication on our website through social media platforms, through all call system and through uh, Genesis emails to try to keep our community up to date as to what we're doing and what's going on. Uh, we have um, we have a comprehensive preparedness plan that is uh, posted on our webpage. We do put up links periodically. I even made a video uh, one day, believe it or not, for um, one of those posts. We're trying to maintain uh, as much communication as, as possible. Um, so far, I think we've, we've been relatively successful on that, but, you know, just as you saw tonight, as much time as we put into preparation for this new frontier, it is not without its hiccups. So, um, we continue to try to maintain communication with our community. 
we will be beginning uh, this week, we are going to meet administratively to initiate a task force with all inclusive of all stakeholders uh, that has yet to be named, but essentially a reopening task force. So as to prepare, so as to incorporate everyone's position, concerns, beliefs, input into our plan to reopen. Whether we're opening reopening on May seventh, May sixteenth, whether we're reopening on June first, or reopening on September first, um, we are going to create a task force later this week, and we're going to reach out to our stakeholders to initiate that because we need uh, we need everybody in the community on this team. So uh, that's our next step. Scott, if I may ask you something with regard to that, Please. whether the whether the state decides to reopen or not reopen for the balance of the year, that as long as we're allowed out in public, I'm assuming we're working on alternate plans for graduation. Yeah, there are some restrictions. So far, the state has stated that they will not. You know, I, I guess I might be coming out there by you. They are very cautious in definitively prohibiting anything. Uh, so what they're saying is they strongly are against any type of graduation that would involve like parade or drive by in any capacity. So we're still in the process of trying to vet that out. Um, it, it's, 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 there are many schools who are doing it over the summer. I will tell you my preference would be to have it at high point, even if that was over the summer, you might not get a hundred percent participation, but I think you would get an increased uh, participation. Uh, if that's not permissible, obviously the virtual option is always a available. I would prefer hopefully to have the opportunity to conduct it obviously on June 18th. If not, my pro my first preference would to have, have it here say in July, maybe August, but that's still in the works and in the discussion as we get very, and I'm not saying this critically, we get very little direction from the state as to what's going to happen. And I only say that because they don't know themselves. Hopefully there'll be a graduation. I think the, the seniors have earned it. It is, it is heartbreaking. Um, as I, we, we, we discuss administratively, we discuss as a family, we discuss the people that I, I talked to and uh, I did post a video. I actually had my son watch it to tell me, I said, is this ridiculous? Is this right? He goes, it's too long, dad cut it shorter so i edited it and made it shorter because i'm trying to look my heart's broken for these kids their their milestones and their uh, experiences of their life and their hopes and dreams and expectations have been robbed of them so it i agree it is my hope that we can do a live regular as close to regular graduation as possible even if that means having it over the summer All right, I'm gonna move on to the update on New Jersey state aid cuts. Um, yeah, so the presentation in, uh, get, brought everybody up to date as to where we are right now. There, uh, after this budget, there will be three more years, I believe, of, uh, of advertised cuts that will become steeper um, to the point where we may get to the point where we get very little, if anything, from our tax dollars coming back from the state. Now that's, that's uh, very upsetting. There's also the possibility that they can readjust their budget because they've pushed their fiscal year to September now. And there's the possibility that they redo the education budget and take more money from us. Now, for those of who are online thinking how you can't take more from us, if the state were to take more money, 
or reduce our um, funding for this year, we would reduce. We would have to find some way to manage that. Uh, we would not redo our budget. We would not revote on our budget. Tonight is the vote on the budget. So if the state says we're going to take another seven hundred thousand dollars from you in July, we would have to figure that out. We would have to cut. So it is daunting. We are in a situation where things are are uh, as they are for the community, the state, and the nation, to some degree, somewhat bleak right now. Uh, but I believe that uh, I believe that we'll we'll we have a plan to make it through. If I may just add to that, if anybody saw. Sunday's Star Ledger lead article was cities, schools, brace for layoffs, and property tax increases. And they're predicting pretty dire results because of the shutdown in the economy. Uh, I, I, give, I give the administration a lot of credit. I know you've been looking at this uh, with grave concerns for a month or two now. And hopefully, hopefully we've done a lot of work to prepare for it. Hopefully it won't be that bad, but look at the options of what we need to do to prepare for the, what I, what I think personally is eventual deeper cuts that the state will do to us. <clears throat> if nothing else on that, I'm gonna to move to action items. Curriculum, Debbie, may I ask you to do that? Surely. Um. Item one is just that we are, we have read and accepted the suspension report for March. Um, I'll move items two, three, and four. Item two is that uh, it's recommended that the board approve the harassment, intimidation, and bullying report for March 17th through April 28th. Item three is that we approve the curricular field trips on our attached roster for next year. And that we, uh, item four, we approve the professional development activities as listed on A6. Moving items two, three, and four, I need a second. 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 Anybody have any questions? Comments? Roll call. Just let me uh, make a note to everybody. My computer froze, so I am using Fran's computer. So if it looks like I'm- You're, you're Fran? Yep, I'm Fran. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mr. Arnold. Yes. Mrs. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Smith. Yes. Dr. Carraza. Yes. Ms. Nugent. Yes. Mr. Dona. Yes. Mr. Ancliffe. Yes. Dr. Kehoe. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, you want me to move to personnel? There was the, you covered all of the, yeah, yes, I'm sorry. We moved next to personnel, Gail. Yeah. Okay, you hearing me okay without the video on? March. No. Uh, Dicey. Are you able to take over, Patty? Yes. Would you, Pat, sorry, Gail, Patty, would you do personnel today? Yes. I, um, I'm going to deal with number one under personnel that is recommended by the superintendent that the Board of Education accepts with regret the resignation notification of James Minkowitz, business administrator, board secretary, effective on or about May 29th, 2020. I'm looking for a second. 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 Okay. Discussion? Jim? What if we vote no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, it's been a pleasure working with you. You're Thank you. Gentlemen, and your numbers always add up, even if I can't do it. <laughs> and the, the fact that our auditors always are so um, effusive with their praise for you and, and your company of uh, fabulous um, workers in your office. You guys do a great job together. You're an excellent team, and we're going to miss you. Thank you. We'll miss you a lot, Jim. Yeah, Thank uh, you, Jim. Thank you, Jim, for everything. As a member of the finance committee for uh, a number of years, I have to say uh, kudos to Jim for his hard work um, 
has made our job somewhat easy. Um, there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes in the business administration office, and uh, if not for for Jim, I'm sure we would have been in more difficult straits. So, I want to thank you and wish you good luck. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate all the the help you've given me with all my questions. You've always had answers to them, so you're helping me learn. I appreciate that very much, and I wish you best best of luck in your future. Thank you. James, I just want to say that you are a gentle man and that I uh, say God bless to you and your family. Thank you. Do we have roll call now? Do we do roll call? Okay. Roll call? Yep. Miss, Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Don? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Dr. Carraza? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Dona. Yes. Mr. Ancliffe. Yes. Mr. Arnold. Yes. Dr. Kehoe. I want to say no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, I think I have to do I have to do each of these independently. Yeah. You can move the whole you can move the whole thing. Yeah, you can move you can move two through six. Two through five. Two through six. Uh, the six of the addendum. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. So I'd like to make a motion to move items two through six. Do I have a second? Second. second. Two is is a, a approving interim business administrator board secretary, Mr. William Sabo, beginning June first or sooner, based upon availability for the remainder of the school year, at an hourly rate of seventy five dollars an hour, up to twenty four hours a week. Number three is approving Mrs. Teresa Rowan for the position of learning disabilities teacher consultant for the 20 to 21 school year at the annual salary of $102,184. Four is approving Mrs. Mary Ann Holder for the position of school nurse for the 2020-21 school year at an annual salary of $76,001. Five, uh, Salary uh, certificated and non-certificated staff members for the 20 to 21 school year is listed. And number six, uh, approve the extended sick, sick FMN, FMLA leave of absence, effective April 28th until such time employees re is released to return to work. Discussion. Roll call. Discussion, no. Roll call, uh, Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Dr. Carraza? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Dona? Thank you, Susan. We're sad. Mr. Rancliffe? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Dr. Kehoe? Yes. Did we get Gail back yet? No, I'll make a note. She looks frozen. <laughs> Poor Gail. The next one is extracurricular. There's no items uh, today. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the next one is policy, uh, but uh, the frozen is doing it. Uh, Unless she's back, Debbie, would you like to do policy if you wouldn't mind? I can do it. Izzy, are you back? Izzy. I'm back. <laughs> can, you do, can you do policy? Do you want to do policy or do you not have your agenda? Oh, I have it. Okay. Would you do policy for us? She's okay. Gone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Oh. A moment. All right. Here we go. All right, I'm going to move items one and two. It is recommended by the superintendent that the board approves the first reading of the following new policies and regulations. There's attachment D1 with policy 1581 about domestic violence, uh, attachment D1A, regulation 1581, and attachment D1B, policy 
8220 having to do with the school day. Number two is uh, that the board approves the following revised policies and regulations. Um, there's attachment D2A, the bylaw, which is the introduction. The attachment D2B bylaw that about the names and classification. Attachment D2C bylaw authority and powers. Attachment D2D bylaw about functions. Attachment D2E about bylaws and policies. Attachment D2F bylaw 0142 about mem board member qualifications and attachment D2G about prohibited acts and code of ethics and nepotism, uh, D2H board member election and appointment, D2I uh, board member resignation and removal and attachment D2J about the health and physical education and D2K administration of medication. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I, I would just like to say that I appreciate not having all of our bylaws all at the same time because it's a lot to look through. So I don't even, I didn't even count. What are there, 10 of them that we did in this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, nine of them. I think that's a good number. I wouldn't want to go more than that because it gives you a chance to look it over right. and that it says what it needs to say. So I appreciate the fact that we're not just slamming the whole lot through. So what we can do is divvy up that which remains over the next two months so we still fulfill Go, uh, board of uh, board goal number one to revise the uh, bylaws. We still have two months to do so. Good. Good. Okay. Thank you, Scott, for doing that. Scott, what is the uh, new medication being added onto that policy? What is that for? Okay, it's just like, one sec. Yeah. All right. Um, it's the, uh, the it's a revised policy that requires the board of education to permit self medication by a student for adrenal insufficiency in addition to other health issue, uh, issues currently in the law, such as asthma, other potentially life-threatening illnesses, or a life-threatening allergic reaction. Okay. It requires policy for administration of hydrocortisone sodium succinate for adrenal insufficiency and designates the school nurse and others to administrate the medication. The medication. How is it, that administered? Is it like an EpiPen or no? Uh, I think actually it's for uh, overdose medication. Okay. What it does, it also provides immunity from liability in relation to the administration of that uh, medication. The biggest issue regarding these statute is the school nurse or another properly trained staff member must be available on site at the school or a school sponsored event, uh, a function or an event. And the student needs to have the, uh, that medication administered. It's uh, similar to the epinephrine law and school districts may uh, they they train will will train the same staff members who have where we've also trained epinephrine uh, administration. Okay. They're both mandated um, in the policy. Okay, thank you. We lost her again. <laughs> Roll call. Roll call, Mr. Dunn. Roll yes. call. Ms. Smith. <laughs> yes. Dr. Carraza. Yes. Ms. Nugent. Yes. Ms. Tadona. Mr. Ann Cliff. Yes. 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 <laughs> Mrs. Anderson. Yes. Dr. Kehoe. Yes. Did we get Gail back? She said yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> uh, the next action item is negotiations. There's nothing in negotiations at this meeting. The next one is board buildings and grounds, and there's nothing, no action items for building and grounds. The next action item is finance. Uh, Mr. Dunn, may I ask you to take that? Certainly. 
So under finance, uh, I'd like to move items one through five together. Item one is a recommendation accept the report of the board secretary business administrator for the month of March, 2020. Item two is a recommendation accept the report of the treasurer for the month of March, 2020. Item three is a recommendation to approve the report of the transfers and minimum expense transfer report for the month of March, 2020. Item four is a recommendation to approve for payment the attached schedule of audited bills dated April 28, 2020. And item five is a recommendation to accept adult education agency account, cafeteria account, principal petty cash, and school store account for the month of March 2020. I make a motion seeking a second. 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 Any discussion on one through five? Okay, and roll call, please. Ms. Ms. Smith. Yes. Dr. Carraza. Yes. Ms. Nugent. Yes. Ms. Tadona. Yes. Mr. Rancliffe. Yes. Mr. Arnold. Yes. Mrs. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Dr. Kehoe. Yes. Okay, I'm going to move item six uh, solely. Um, and I'm going to, uh, yes, I'm going to read it. <laughs> item six, be it resolved that the board approves the adoption of the school budget for the 2020-2021 school year as follows. Travel and related expense reimbursement for 2020-2021. Whereas the High Point Regional High School Board of Education recognizes school staff and board members will incur travel expenses related to and within the scope of their current responsibilities and for travel that promotes the delivery of instruction or furthers the efficient operation of the school district and whereas uh, NJAEC um, as listed requires board members to receive approval of these expenses by majority of the full voting membership of the board and staff members to receive prior approval of these expenses by the superintendent of schools and a majority of the full voting membership of the board and whereas a high point regional High School Board of Education may establish for regular district business travel only an annual school year threshold of $1,500 per staff member, where prior board approval shall not be required unless the annual threshold for a staff member is exceeded in a given school year. And whereas travel and related expenses not in compliance with NJAC as listed, but deemed by the High Point Regional High School Board of Education to be necessary and unavoidable as noted on the approved High Point Regional High School Board of Education out of district travel and reimbursement forms. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the High Point Regional High School Board of Education approves all travel not in compliance with NJAC as listed as being necessary, unavoidable, as noted on the approved High Point Regional High School Board of Education out of district travel and reimbursement forms. And be it further resolved, the High Point Regional High School Board of Education approves travel and related expenses in accordance with NJAC as listed to a maximum expenditure of $75,000 for all staff members and board, staff and board members. Adoption of budget 2020-2021. Be it resolved that the budget be approved for the 2020-2021 school year using the 2020-2021 state aid figures and the sec secretary to the High Point Regional High School Board of Education be authorized to submit the following budget to the executive county superintendent of schools. And uh, the table as listed, I will read just the totals, total expenditures of 23,512, uh, $23,512,019. Less anticipated revenues of $6,939,136. Taxes to be raised then $16,572,883. Therefore, be it resolved that the High Point Regional High School Board of Education approves the levy of general fund taxes for the 2020-2021 school year to be $16,572,883. The 2020-2021 tax levy is inclusive of bank cap in the amount of $1,744,688. State aid has been reduced by 1.723 million over the past four years. This budget addresses health and safety issues related to facility and capital uh, in capital projects and student-centered items and program integrity. 
capital outlay. Be it resolved that the High Point Regional High School Board of Education requests to approve capital outlay for the 2020-2021 tentative school budget in the amount of $669,267 for the following projects at High Point Regional High School as contained in the amended long range facility plan. Storage tank removal of $100,000, roofs, HVAC, rooftop units, driveways, drainage of $569,267 and to advertise said tentative budget in the New Jersey Herald in accordance with the form suggested by the State Department of Education and according to law. I make the motion seeking a second. Second. I will open item six for discussion. Any comments? I assume we didn't get any other comments from the community. One just came up. Oh, never yeah. mind. Retracted. Yeah, but this is for comments by board members. Oh, God. Yes, good. but we did say that if somebody had had trouble getting us their information, we would take it and discuss it at this time. But I, I guess it didn't happen. So that's okay. I guess I'd like to make a, a couple of comments. And uh, first off, and this is no fun for anybody on this board <laughs> that need to be passing this budget. I think we've all done a commendable job over the past couple of years of doing everything we can to be fiscally responsible. But we're at a convergence of events right now that require this type of action. We have a 50 year old building with a 30, uh, with a roof that has a 30 year old life. We have a state in, uh, capital in Trenton cutting our funds drastically by almost three quarters of a million dollars this year and possibly more this summer. In fairness, we have a teacher's contract that requires a, a pay increase, a well-deserved pay increase, one of the lower ones of the contracts in the county. And when you add those up, that basically comes up to the increase that we, that we need to do. And we're, we're supposed to be stewards of this school. And if you look at the definition of stewardship, it's a responsible overseeing and protection of something considered worth caring for and preserving. It doesn't always say doing actions you like. Some, many times it means doing the action you don't like but you know is necessary. I believe we've dwindled down our reserve account to 10% of what it was just a couple of years ago in efforts to save funds for the taxpayers. The taxpayers haven't to pay, needed to pay on a mortgage for years. So they, so the taxpayers, we've been doing a great job for them in keeping the tax bills as low as possible. At least I know over the four years I've been on the board and to my knowledge prior to that. It's regrettable we have to do this, but it's inevitable. The, it's a 50 year old building. It needs to be maintained. And to the extent the state keeps cutting our aid well, we've got to find cuts also where it's going to have much of it, if not all of it's going to have to be made up. And that's what's happening this year. It's a tough pill to swallow, but one we had to, had to recommend. And one I strongly, regrettably, but strongly support. Bill, ponying up on what you just said there, and I, I think that this budget is a long, shows long-term thinking. Uh, this is not a budget for one year, but one that is laying the groundwork for the future, as well as the hardships you just outlined. Um, I think it, Scott said it's been seven or nine, seven and nine, or seven, eight or nine consecutive budgets where we had a negative tax increase. Um, and I remember when I came on the board last year, right before budget season and seeing that there was absolutely no money budgeted uh, regarding our potential capital projects. Um, by the grace of God, we didn't have a tree fall through a roof or some other natural disaster to our building. Um, so, you know, I think that the quality of this school and maintaining the quality of the school is in all of the taxpayers' interests, all of our bottom line interests. Um, if this school were to deteriorate and not have the 
the value that it currently has, that is going to affect every taxpayer in this district, their property values, et cetera. And it's going to have a, an even worse economic impact if we were not to be the stewards that you mentioned. Um, so uh, this is a big pill. Um, it was a big pill before the pandemic, but I think it's in our best interests and our best long-term interests to approve this budget, and I will be supporting it. Thank you. And this increase is just for this year, and it's something we, we have to take now or else we don't get it for the future. Any other board member comments? I'd like to make my own. Um, I've said this um, in previous years. I, I consider the vote on the budget one of the most important votes the, a board member gets to participate in. Um, this one is, is, is a tough one. Um, of my more than five years on the board, this is the first budget that requests an increase um, that, that I'll be voting on. Um, I believe that uh, previous boards and this board have attempted to be as fiscally responsible as, as possible, um, but we've come to a point where we, we have to pay the piper. Uh, we need to continue to invest in the facilities and quite honestly, the students that are currently in the school, the students that are coming in next year and the following years deserve the same quality education that previous years have had. It wasn't their fault that they got stuck in a pandemic. Um, they shouldn't have to pay the price um, indefinitely for that. So uh, although I've previously been very supportive of the tough finance, uh, fiscal positions we've taken, I will be supporting this budget with the increase that is there because I believe strongly that we cannot go backwards. We need to continue to invest uh, what is needed to keep the school what it is. If no further comments, Jim, can I have a roll call? Dr. Carraza. <clears throat> yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Tadona? Yes. Mr. Ancliffe? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Dr. Kehoe? Yes. Okay. Um, I will move the remaining two items, seven and eight, together in finance. Seven is a recommendation that the board approves uh, the following tuition contracts between High Point Regional High School sending and the following districts and related information. Um, the, they are as listed. And item eight is it be resolved that the board secretary and board president are hereby authorized to enter into a food service management contract with Machios Food Services Incorporated um with the address as listed for such management services in the amount of twenty thousand four hundred dollars and a no guarantee for the 2020-2021 school year uh can i have a second uh make the motion i can I have a second on item seven and eight. Second. any discussion on those items hearing none roll call please Ms. nugent Yes. Ms. Tadona? Yes. Mr. Ancliffe? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Dr. Carraza? Yes. Dr. Kehoe? Yes. We move on to the next action item, H, transportation. Mr. Carraza? I'd like to move items one through eight. <clears throat> Item one uh, being the approval of the joint transportation agreement between High Point Regional and Walk Hill Valley Regional High Schools as listed. Item two, a joint transportation agreement between 
High Point Regional High School and Lafayette Township Elementary School as listed. Item three is a High Point uh, Joint Transportation Agreement between High Point Regional High School and Sussex Wantage Re Regional School as listed. Item four is a joint transportation agreement between High Point Regional High School and Frankfort Township Elementary School as listed. Item five is a joint transportation agreement between the Sussex County Regional Transportation Cooperative and High Point Regional High School as listed. Item six is a joint transportation agreement between the Sussex County Regional Transportation Cooperative and High Point Regional High School uh, as listed. Item seven is a joint transportation agreement between the Sussex County Regional Transportation Cooperative and High Point Regional High School for athletic and field trips as listed. And item eight is a joint transportation agreement uh, for the transportation of Park Ridge, of a Park Ridge School District special needs student for the remainder of the 2019-2020 school year as listed. Can I please get a second? Second. Do I have any discussion? I'd ask for a roll call, please. Ms. Nugent. Yes. Ms. Tadona. Yes. Mr. Ancliffe. Yes. Mr. Arnold. Yes. Mrs. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Dr. Carraza. Yes. Dr. Kehoe. Yes. Moving on, uh, long-term planning. There's nothing on the agenda for today. Legal, nothing on the agenda for today. Correspondence, We did. I did receive the letter from Mr. Gettler, but I read it earlier rather than waiting till now. Bill, can I ask you a question about correspondence, not about Mr. Gettler's correspondence, but just in general. Um, we, last month in our, in our meeting, we accepted donations um, we accepted $5,000 for the Meal for a Meal uh, um, group, and we accepted book donations from SUNY to Stefano from the Branchville Broad Street Books, and we, we accepted $2,000 for Thor Labs, all of which were noted in our, in our uh, minutes. Do we send them thank you letters? Do we publicly acknowledge them for that? We, we send them thank you letters. I don't know if it's publicly acknowledged, but we acknowledge it directly to the contributor. Okay. That's, that was really my question. And I guess if it's in our minutes, it's been publicly acknowledged as well. So I just, I just wanted to make sure that they know that we appreciate that and that the public knows that these people are generous with their gifts. Okay. That's yes. it. Though. Okay. I, I, I always offer to send it from the business office. If there's a monetary amount, and the don donor can uh, use it as they wish. Sometimes they use it for tax purposes um, as well, so. Okay. Great. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, next item, miscellaneous. At this point in time, I do, there's nothing on there, but I do want to point out that we have the CSA evaluation that needs to be completed. And if you, if you have not completed, if you could do so soon, because we need to have it wrapped up by the end of June, which means we have to meet uh, with the superintendent on it. So that would probably be the June meeting. So we need to meet on it in May to come up with a final CSA evaluation. I'm, I'm gonna just throw it out there that I don't know where this is. It's in an email that we got, right? Did, did it come if you email from? Kathy Hellowa, she okay. should be able to help you. It's and from Kathy? Yes. Okay. Yes, Kathy sent it. I have okay. trouble. I had a trouble with a couple of sections in it with, with accessing the data. So I'm curious to see if anybody else had trouble with it or if it was just me. Okay. All right. I think the, uh, the issue came down to which um, platform you were using, either Chrome or Safari. Oh, I okay. think it required Chrome. I did use Chrome. Oh, all right. Yeah. Then maybe it needed Safari. I don't know. But <laughs> I used Chrome when I did it. So... But were you able, was Dan able to help you? He, Kathy was able to send me links that had okay. the information that was missing. Because when it came through on the, the data, it came, there were three links, but it came through in one line. 
So I don't know what happened, but I'm just curious to see if it was just me or anybody else. Okay, the next one is public comments again. I'm gonna open it up to public comments. In the interim, we did receive a couple more public comments. They were all from Ms. Sharon Uchida from Wantage who commented earlier and each of the comments related to uh, requesting us not to pass the budget. Other than that, I have not seen any other comments yet. Is there any non-committee board member reports for comments? I would like to just say um, that I'm super proud of our um, the the information we got about our um, the musical. Um, and that they're going to be uh, sharing that. Um, and it was selected by a former Broadway star, I believe. Do you have more information on that, Scott? Yeah, I sent an email out earlier today. Uh, Caroline Reese, our uh, Superintendent Roundtable Award, Round Table Award winner, uh, sent us an email regarding interaction that she had with a Broadway star who is from New Jersey regarding um, when we, when she had sent out, uh, what is it? We sing. Um, I'm looking for the email. I don't want to mess it up. Um, oh, I'm in the wrong section. <laughs> it's okay. We got the email and it is, it was really nice. It was really nice. Um, yeah, I have, it's our gift is our song video was uh, yeah. selected to be um, the Broadway performer, Laura ben Benanti, and uh, is using the video um, for a concert on Saturday. Um, she selected ours, and I think that that is kudos to everybody involved with that. That was fantastic news. And I think we're gonna be able to find out more about when that concert, how to access it, in case anybody was interested in seeing that, that's gonna be, forthcoming yeah all right any other non-committee board member reports or comments uh i'd just like to thank dan mr yardley uh for organizing all of this and helping us get through our technical difficulties earlier tonight um this is something that we wouldn't have been able to do without him so yeah for sure and that i i have to say dan thank you very much but i know he put a real lot of effort into it i <laughs> So spoke and dealt with him on a number of occasions during the week <laughs> trying to prepare for it. And I, I would also like to thank the public for putting up with us. This is our first uh, our first trial run. So it may not have gone perfect, but I think it went pretty well. If there's uh, one last thing on other business, Jim, are there any open requests? Um, you know, I did, I, I received one simple OPA request on April 1st, and I sent it right out April 1st. It was from Mr. Gettler. All he wanted was a copy of the tentative budget that we discussed at the last meeting. It took me five minutes to run it through the copier, and I sent it to him. Thank you very much. Any others? That's it? Uh, Dr. Kehoe, there have been uh, two comments uh, in the last few minutes, if you'd uh, li uh, like me to read them. Uh, if you would, yes. Okay, one is from uh, Dawn Heller, who is from Wantage, I believe, uh, Colesville. Uh, the statement is, would just like to say thank you to a wonderful business administrator, Jim Minkowitz, and he will be missed. The next comment is from Todd Miller, I believe, from Lafayette. Uh, who states, thank you for your service, Jim. You are a good man. Best of luck. Nice. And that uh, Carla Mancuso stated, uh, she's uh, stated, good luck, Jim. And then Ms. Uchida had another comment stating, I am trying to wrap my head around this. Dr. Ripley said, even if our taxes are put up, the state can come in and take that as well. So why would we put taxes up now? Um, 
so those were the those were the comments okay if there's no other items i have motion to adjourn motion thank you do we have a second second all in favor aye, aye. 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 any opposed Seeing no opposed have a good evening everyone thank you thank you everyone thank you, everybody thank you.